Here we are asked to evaluate the integral, and you are probably doing this within the context of a section in your book on the various techniques of integration. So one of the problems that students face is how do they determine which technique to follow. There are a number of rules of thumb to select the appropriate technique. We have boxed in one of those rules that is most applicable here, and it's asking us to classify the integrand according to its form. So your integrand is this expression right here. And one of the forms that you learned about in an earlier section is the trigonometric functions. So we can see here that if f of x is a product of powers of sine of x and cosine of x, or of tan x and secant of x, etc., then we can use some substitution methods. Now, if we look carefully here, we actually don't have the product of powers of sine and cosine, but rather the quotient of powers of sine and cosine. But it still will work. And so we're going to follow the techniques that we learned in section 7.2. And so we've listed one of those techniques here, and it asks us to do the following. If the power of sine is odd, which indeed it is, we have sine to the power of three right here, then what we're going to first do is save one sine factor. So what that means is you're going to rewrite your integrand and for sine cubed, you're going to save one of the three factors of sine. So you'll write sine of x, and then you're going to multiply that by the sine squared of x. Notice, of course, that together those are still sine cubed. And then we're dividing this by the cosine of x still. As we read on, it then requests that we use an identity. It says that the sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x. So why don't we come down here, we'll rewrite the integrand, but we're going to apply that trigonometric identity. So this sine squared of x right here is going to be rewritten as 1 minus cosine squared of x. And then finally, we can see, and you can kind of skip all this stuff here, we can see that we're going to do a u substitution. We're going to let u equal the cosine of x. Now recall that when you do a u substitution, after selecting your u, you then have to differentiate the equation. So you're going to have du equals, now the derivative of cosine of x, of course, is negative sine of x. And then you'll have your dx here. I like to go ahead and solve this for dx. You'll see why that's useful in a moment. So to solve for dx, we will divide both sides by negative sine of x. The negative sine of x's cancel out on the right-hand side, so we can see that du over negative sine of x is going to equal our dx. Continuing on with this u substitution, we're going to make substitutions now. So recall that we're looking at this expression when making our substitutions. So we're going to have the integral of 9. Now, the sine of x is still present here. That's being multiplied by 1 minus. Now, remember, for cosine of x, or cosine squared, we had let u equal the cosine of x. So that means that the cosine squared of x would just be u squared. And then this is divided by the cosine of x, which again is just u. And then at the end, you're multiplying by dx. Let's recall that we solved dx and we had gotten du over negative sine of x. Let me try to squeeze this in here. This is why we actually solved for the dx because what happens in these u substitutions is that you're going to get an x term or multiple x terms sometimes that cancel out. So those sine of x's are going to cancel out if you look a little bit carefully here, you still have that negative sign, and you still have this constant 9 right here. So basically that's 9 divided by negative 1, which is negative 9. You can factor the negative 9 out of the integral. So you'll have negative 9 multiplied by the integral of 1 minus u squared, all divided by u, du. Now this is a much simpler integral to evaluate, but before we evaluate it, let's continue to simplify it. We're basically going to split the numerator. So you're allowed to rewrite this as 1 over u minus u squared over u. There's a little bit of simplifying here. u squared divided by u 
is just u. So we're going to rewrite it one more time. Negative 9 times the integral of 1 over u minus u du. Now we are ready to integrate. And recall that the integral of 1 over u is just the natural log of the absolute value of u. And then we subtract the integral of u. That's just a basic power rule. So right now we have u to the 1. You'll add 1 to the exponent to make u to the power of 2 and then put that over the new exponent of 2. Don't forget your constant of integration. And also, let's not forget that u was equal to the cosine of x. So you actually have to go back and replace the u with the cosine of x in order to finish off the problem. For u squared, you'll end up with cosine squared of x. And this indeed is the correct answer to the question.